Hey everybody, my name is John Merrill. I'm Kevin Hines. We're the Chain Smokers. This is Randy from Straight No Chaser. And October is Mental Health Awareness Month. We want everybody to pass the love. Pass the love. Pass the love. By either telling your story or sharing words of support. So others know they're not alone in this and that it's okay to talk about it. Because you never know who it is that you might help. And it's really important that you support each other and listen to each other and be there for one another. So if you want to share your story, make sure you tag it with the hashtag pass the love. Pass the love. The hashtag pass the love. That's what it's all about, pass the love, Jackie. And it's also about stopping the stigma of when it, talking about mental health awareness. And that's what Please Pass the Love is doing today with an amazing opportunity of students of all ages coming together so that they can talk about it. But it's also about sharing your story. And we're very excited to have a very special guest joining us this morning who's going to be the main speaker at that conference later on this morning. And that is NBA player, former Cyclone, that's Royce right, Cyclone. White, joining us in <laughs> studio. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Thank you for having me. Okay, so uh, r tell everybody, in case they might not know your personal story, why are you at the forefront of talking about uh, mental health and mental awareness? Well, you know, when I was drafted uh, back in 2013, um, mental health was a topic that just wasn't discussed, not only amongst athletes, but public figures in general. Even our politicians uh, had really uh, failed to bring mental health to the, the main stage as far as the issues go. And, um, you know, I, I took the time out of my career or, uh, you know, what I was doing at that age, which was very young, you know, 21 years old, to say that mental health is the most important topic that we face as a, as a society. And uh, I took a lot of backlash for it. But, you know, six years later, it's, uh, it's shaken out that it is. Oh, and what it, if you don't mind sharing your personal story that made this come to the forefront for you, as you said, in a very yeah. young career? Well, you know, I've uh, been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder since I was 16 years old. Um, it was around that time that I started having my first panic attacks. And, um, you know, as I tried to navigate that uh, as a teenager and, and on into college, uh, it, it really opened my eyes to uh, not only how much of an impact it can have on one individual's life, but kind of what it was doing to all of the people around me. You know, I was starting to learn how many more people were dealing with this, uh, you know, this kind of silent disease. Now, what, how did it affect you personally when it, when it came to playing either for Iowa State or going playing professionally? It didn't really affect me too much when I played here at Iowa State. Okay. Um, you know, I think that's one of the big misconceptions about mental health uh, conditions or specifically anxiety, or any of them really, that uh, they have some, you know, some telling effect on the individual dealing with them. Uh, like we discussed before we got on air, uh, I'm one of the only players in the history of college basketball to lead my team in all five categories while dealing with anxiety every day of, of, of that stretch of time. So, um, you know, it, it didn't affect me too much uh, basketball wise. It affected me in my daily life. It's, it's a part of my daily life. Um, and that can be anything from uh, energy levels, the mood, uh, you know, anything else. Um, but, you know, I think, I think by and large, it affects people in a number of different ways and we have to pay attention to that. And was there assistance for you out there? You might have been diagnosed and there, it was called something when you were 16, but was there assistance out there? Were, were you able to talk about it then? Or how has that differed to where you are at now in your life? I think we're all really hard pressed to come by adequate uh, support systems. Uh, when, when talking about mental health or, or trying to treat mental health, especially in our teenage years, uh, for a number of reasons, obviously uh, systems of support and, and, and their flaws in, in our country, but also, you know, just being young and not having the, the language or the, the words to really be able to articulate what it is that we're going through. So uh, I was fortunate to be in a school system in, in Minnesota where we did have those resources uh, available to us on hand, but my situation is very, very unique and, and very fortunate as uh, opposed to everybody else, I think. And so what are you hoping to convey to the kids that are coming to see you today at capacity? So you're gonna be talking to hundreds yeah. and hundreds of kids of different age levels. What are you hoping to get across to them today? This is the biggest issue they face. You know, uh, there will be increasing conversations about social issues as, as they go forward into, you know, being uh, high schoolers and college students and then adults um, as, as the internet increases and, and, right. and you know, the noise increases. Um, but the mental health topic is the most important topic they face. It's really about them. Um, and it's really about the people that they're around and the way that they interact with both. Do you think kids are able to talk about it a little easier than it was so even six years ago? 
I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. I, I think we've created a space where people can say mental health, but I don't think we've created a space where it's a priority. So it's important that they listen to what you say today. I think so. No, I think no so. you're right. No, it is. Because, because we need to get this conversation going, and it starts with the kids. Yeah, well, they're dealing with things that are much more, diff that are, that are much more tough, tougher even than, than when I was a kid. You know, I didn't have to deal with social media. Uh, I didn't have to deal with the YouTube. And, and although uh, big media conglomerates kind of had their hands on the information that we saw, and, and there were a lot of people that are unhappy with that, mm -hmm. um, it may prove to be much more of an effective uh, way to deal with information than letting anybody say anything at any time. Mm -hmm. So for our viewers out there that can't be a part of the conversation that's happening later on this mm -hmm. afternoon, what would you say to them to get that conversation started or maybe just be a listening ear? Yeah. Mental health is the most important topic we face. Um, if you think that you have an issue, you probably do and you should probably go see somebody and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's people that I see to, to help maintain my mental health and uh, it's an effective tool. It should be one that's seen as, as common or as uh, useful as going to see a, a regular doctor. Absolutely. Let, let's talk a little bit how about you're making a difference in uh, professional sports where that topic isn't often talked about. Yeah. Uh, so what happened as, as soon as this past summer? Yeah, so you know, this last summer I played in a league called the Big Three. Ice Cube started his own three-on-three uh, -three basketball league and um, we were able to put together the first real comprehensive mental health policy in, in the sports world uh, this past summer. And, um, you know, it was a, a very historic moment. Um, and, you know, all of the credit goes to, to them as an organization for being able to commit to that and, and make that leap. Because, you know, really the, the roadblock that we face uh, systemically is one between the medical world and the legal world and how medical uh, language and, and scientific language often doesn't match up with legal language. And, you know, it's, it's a matter of, you know, the pursuit of, of wellness and the pursuit of quality of life versus liability. Right. And so for them, they take on a lot of liability by saying we are committed to the mental health of, of our athletes. Now they don't take as much liability as a, a company like Walmart would but they do have their own liability and, and it carries its own risk, but they uh, look past that and saw the benefit of mental health. Really quickly, uh, as we've talked about, social media can kind of be a stigma. It can also be beneficial and you're sharing your story. Yeah. Uh, how can people see that? Um, you know, you can YouTube, I flew here. We, we created a series that, that kind of uh, tried to combat the, the false narrative that I can't fly. Um, I flew to the big three every, every weekend. It was a 10 week process. Um, and every weekend we were somewhere different. And, uh, you know, we documented the series and, and that's on YouTube now. You can just go to YouTube, type in I Flew Here and, and that will pop up and you can uh, kind of see what, what, what that environment was like and the people that were involved in, in that historic process. So right. I Flew Here. I flew here. I flew, I flew here. All right. Okay. Uh, we appreciate you joining us here and getting this conversation started this Thank morning you. and Thank everything you you're so doing much. for the kids later on today. Please pass the love. One way to give back, give back to organizations that are helping our kids start that conversation. You're watching Iowa Live here on CWI with 23. We'll be right back celebrating you next.